Well, welcome back, guys, to Hope Island Zoo. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day today because we are going to get all our feet a little bit wet with this little part of the speed build. So, in case if you guys haven't already been following, like, you know, the updates of Hope Island Zoo on um, ZSU server, by the way, that is linked in the description right down below if you guys do want to join. You don't need to, but it's a great way to stay, you know, up to date with everyone's projects. I know that me, Sib, Nick are all doing stuff in there, and it's a really awesome way to kind of keep your bearings as to what's happening in here. Now, we should probably talk about what I wanted to do over here. So, I was very inspired by this little place I went to called Coral World uh, way back in the day when I was like 8 or 9. I don't know. It's in St. Thomas, one of the uh, Virgin Islands. And they have this observatory that you could walk out to. It's in the middle of the ocean and they have this little thing underwater. It's really cool. It brings you right down to sea level. And, I don't know, I just really wanted to have that. Now, granted, Rhode Island doesn't really have the most colorful fauna underwater, but I really did want to integrate this nonetheless. We could uh, probably imply that we got a good old grant from Save the Bay, which is actually a local institution over here. Uh, I went there for camp all the time. It's a really awesome place if you guys are native to the area. Now, one of the things I really did want to do was have this beautiful observatory to really focus on what species might be living in, like, you know, the water surrounding Hope Island, and it really turned out so good. Now, I do apologize. The speed build is a little bit choppy. There is some stuff that doesn't get put in here, that makes it into the final cut of this entire project. I do apologize on that, but I am very happy with how all of this turned out. So one of the things I did want to have over here was have it be a nice semi-modern aquarium on the inside. Uh, this is going to be phase one of our phase three phase aquarium project. Um, it's going to be really awesome. I'm actually going to put a little bit of a picture news update right up there for you guys from our little press room. Always love sharing those with you guys. I do apologize for the last episode of not including that. Uh, kind of stupid of me to do so. But moving on from here, I am going through here and adding some more poles and beams and whatnot. Just making sure that everything is staying up to date, making sure that everything feels very nice and integrated. I do apologize if you hear my dog in the background. I'm very distracted today. Not really sure what's happening. But, yep, uh, adding, like, the little walkway out there. I use the aquatic path, and we actually do overlay that with the custom path texture on top. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the aquatic path but it does have some really awesome rails that comes pre-built into that. And we're also using ZZ's Coral Pack. This is beautiful in case if you guys do want to have like aquariums and stuff. He has a lot of real corals that he painstakingly made. Oh my gosh, big shout out to him. Um, I think he's also in ZSU as well with Twin Antlers, I think his zoo name is. So if you guys are in there, I highly do recommend checking him out. He's a wonderful little builder. Now moving through here, obviously we got to have a nice rocky coastline. Make sure that it feels very nice and integrated within to the surrounding area. And adding just all these beautiful clusters of rocks all over the place. I did get these off of the workshop. I forgot who they were by. But if you just type up, like, a uh, tundra rock structure or something, it'll come up. You guys may be saying, Leaf, why the hell are you putting those trashed vehicles in the bottom of the water? Well, that's actually a very interesting thing that a lot of places tend to do. It's called an artificial reef, and it's a really awesome way to integrate, you know, junk, stuff that may be considered junk up here, like, you know, on the surface land, and throwing it down there so groups of corals and fish can really sleep in there. They can find shelter in it. It's really awesome how they make that all happen. I think there's a few artificial reefs off the coast of Rhode Island. I'm not really sure uh, where they are, but it's really awesome to see how that all happens. Um, it's just a really awesome way to give back to the environment and kind of take what may be considered dangerous up here and, you know, kind of trash pollution and turning it into something that is extremely beneficial. So we throw some of those down there. And basically the most extent of this part over here is going to be foliage work. Yeah, so we essentially dress this up with a lot of nice corals, nothing too crazy. 
Um, I think I went a little bit too crazy, I'm gonna be completely honest, but that's just a way to get some light under there. Some light, some color, make it look nice. Uh, otherwise it would just be all greens and browns and blues and it just wouldn't look the best. So I do throw like some red and yellow coral in there. I think I have some purple that kind of makes its way in there as well. Just wanted to make sure that that all, that like the whole area felt nice and welcoming when it comes to all that stuff. I think it turned out pretty swanky in the end. I don't know, I'm very happy with it. We had some plate corals as well. And we also integrate some of JoJo's scenery in here from the General Zoo pack, which is a really awesome pack. Uh, the rocks in there, not really my favorite for terrestrial builds, but they are perfect for aquatic builds and marine builds and stuff like that. Came out just beautifully. You guys may be saying, Leaf, how the hell are you doing this? All on the edge of the map, uh, I do want to say that I am using the free build mod that allows me to essentially put water wherever I want for the most part, and I am using uh, various series of barriers, using a lot of different paths in order to get this all to work out. It's all like a lot of fine tuning, but it's all worth it in the end because we get some beautiful shots of this entire complex. I am so happy and satisfied with how well this turned out. Uh, phase two of this entire project, you guys may remember like the little blurb that came up a little while ago. That's going to concern four public marine biology exhibits. So we're going to have like a touch tank. I'm working with some of the staff to request some domestic animals for that. Uh, for the most part, however, that's not going to be for a while. I did temporarily outsource the entire building to Bold. Just the shell of it, at least. Uh, not sure if she's going to do it or not. If she does, great. If she doesn't, also great. We can always make that work somehow or another later down the line. But one of the things I really did want to do was have that be phase two. And phase three will actually be labs. So one of the things I do want to integrate are endangered species captive breeding programs. Obviously, they won't really be for the public. But it will be an initiative that we do want to undertake under our realm. Uh, that's something that I really want to make sure that this zoo emphasizes is conservation, by the way. Beautiful elevators right there. I forget who they're by, but I do want to say, I finally do have my wall of blueprints, or at least the people who made the blueprints and the mods that I use, as well as anyone who donates animals over here. So that's going to be something to touch on in just a little bit. But going through here and adding the rest of, you know, the infrastructure and whatnot... The actual top part is something that I really struggled with, but I think it came out pretty well in the end. Uh, I didn't want it to be too overbearing, so we just make it be kind of like a dome. Uh, nothing crazy, once again, I just really wanted to make that be simple and have the real treasures of this exhibit really speak through the natural environment around it. Uh, obviously, we don't really have the best budget as well, so we can't really do anything special with the dome. Uh, already this is going to be a very expensive project, probably a couple million in the hole. But listen, we can probably imply that we got that all from like, you know, various universities and whatnot. In fact, that's actually what I think I did. I think I talked about like, yeah, it's with the help of a couple of universities in here, the state of Rhode Island and the Feinstein Foundation. So it's actually very wonderful. We do a lot of building behind the scenes over here as well. I do apologize. If you guys are looking for interior builds, speed builds, I'm not your guy for that. I do apologize. When I work with interiors, there is a lot of deleting. There's a lot of redoing. There is a lot of tiny, tiny building that really doesn't make for good speed builds. I do apologize on that. It's not the best thing for me to include. But if you guys are interested in that, I don't know. Maybe we could do a live stream sometime. I don't know. I really, I had a lot of fun with the last live stream with you guys. That was wicked fun. The uh, 5K celebration with Nick. Oh my gosh, that was so fun with all of you guys there. It was so great. Uh, I also add the decals and the moss over there to act as, you know, a little bit of a tidal line. So when the water comes up, it would probably reach the top of that tidal line. But when it goes down, it'll be kind of like near the bottom. And we also do a little bit of lore building over here as well. I actually don't even take any pictures of this. So this is like the only documentation I have of this entire area. So moving through here, what I add is just a bunch of behind the scenes areas just as a way to make it feel a little bit more organic with the scene make it feel like yeah we're under construction right now but you guys can still visit the observatory uh we actually don't even have a path down to the observatory yet i don't even know if we will because 
Like, it's such a clustered area that I don't think guests will be able to reach down there anyways. So, I don't know. We'll figure that out down later down the line. But, listen, all things considered, it was a really fun project to really get to work on. Um, I'm not even sure if I have what I have for the wallabies in here or not. Um, I probably should, but if I don't, I'm going to add those later down the line. Actually, no, we're going to pause this right now. Be right back. Okay, yeah, I knew something was up. Okay, sorry, I know you guys didn't see that cut right there, but it's fine. Uh, one of the things I did forget to have in here was the actual speed build for the Wallaby, so we'll see that in just a little bit. Uh, one of the things I also did here was re-add all that stuff over there, because once you take the water out, you can't really add it back once you do take it out, because of all those paths over there. But moving through here, we do have the Wallabies. I love these little guys so much, we can actually have... A few press room releases coming up pretty soon. Uh, forgive me because I do need to exit out of Adobe. Uh, and reopen Adobe because everything is great. Everything is running smoothly right now, guys. I cannot ask for a better system right now than the one I'm working on. But, of course, hey, listen. While I'm, like, not looking at the speed build right now, how are you guys doing with your ZSU Zoos? I know a ton of you have signed up. And I love going through, like, all these new channels, seeing what everyone's adding. It's really awesome to see just how many of you guys are becoming so devoted to this project. And it makes me so happy. Because it's such a great way to interact with you guys on a different level. Um, I don't know. I'm just very happy with how it all comes out in the end. It's just a really awesome project. And I cannot be more happy to share it with you guys. Now, I actually have Adobe loaded back up so I can actually see what is going on screen. So essentially what I'm doing over here, I'm doing a little bit of a backstage area. Well, implied backstage area for little wallabies. They don't really have the biggest habitat, I have to admit. But I think it works for wallabies, especially two wallabies. They don't really require a lot of space. But we do give them a nice little grass mound for them to chew on. They are very much fans of eating grass and stuff like that. They essentially fill the deer niche in Australia because Australia does not have any native deer. I think they do have a few species that are invasive, which is very interesting. Uh, I also have pretty low fences. I should probably go back and add some double fences to those just because they could probably hop out of there. They could probably climb out of there and it's something that I do not want to happen. Maybe I could go back and add some wire or something, but we do kind of cross it over over here with a little bit of gravel so the guests don't get too close to the wallabies. I know they're extremely cute. And in fact, we're just going to throw a little bit of a press room release right up there for you guys just to see them popping in here. I do got to give a huge shout out to my good friend Forge, Mr. Concord Forge. Uh, he did the logo for the zoo. He's doing everyone's logos. Five bucks a pop if you guys haven't already seen that. So def definitely go give him some love. Uh, one of the things I'm also doing over here is doing a little bit of a shelter area for them as well nothing crazy just wanted to have a little bit of a thatch roof with them i think it came out pretty cute in the end they have a nice little habitat i'm very happy for our little wallaby friends um and yeah that's pretty much it uh i do want to show off like one of the press releases for the actual observatory even though we're working on the wallabies right now so i'll pop that in right there uh, hope you guys enjoy it. It's really fun, especially with the aquarium prop pack. Never used it. I have to admit, I have never used it in my zoos, but I am loving it for this project in particular. I may go back and add some more pieces to it later down the line, but all things being said, that is it. We're on to B-roll. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, be sure to drop a like down below, drop a comment, let me know how your zoos are doing, and definitely do subscribe if you aren't already. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.